Welcome. My name is Bruce Fielder, and I'm privileged to be the worship associate this morning and part of the team that is working to live stream this service to you, wherever you may be. We are an inclusive congregation that welcomes you as you are, inclusive of all your identities, complexities, and situations. We welcome your whole self, even if it isn't fully assembled, because we recognize that we are all a work in progress and that we are all in this together. The service is being posted on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page so that folks can watch it later. Feel free to share it with your friends. Now, if you'll join me in our opening affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth, its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humankind in fellowship. For these high purposes do we unite in worship. Our chalice lighting today is titled A Flame to Light Our Path by Deborah Burrell. Fire consumes and casts a bright light. May our chalice flame consume our regrets for the past, our fears about the future, and our worries about today. May it light for us a path of joy and peace. Hey, everybody, come sing a song with me. Here's our note. La. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me that I might know your mind. And I And a rose in the winter time. Come dream a dream with me. Come dream a dream with me. Come dream a dream with me. That I might know your mind. And I'll bring you home when hope is hard to find. The reading this morning is from the first UU of San Antonio, and it's actually, they have seven principles of black lives, and I have just picked two, uh, the principle number one and principle number five. Principle number one is, all black lives matter. 
queer black lives, trans black lives, formerly incarcerated black lives, black women's lives, differently abled black lives, black elderly and children's lives. All black lives matter and are creators of this space. We throw no one under the bus. We rise together. The movement for black lives calls upon the Unitarian Universalism, Universalist faith, a faith that is willing to make the bold proclamation that each person inherently matters, to live up to that claim by working toward a future in which, in which black lives are truly valued in our society. We call on UUs to actively resist notions that black lives only matter if conformed to white middle-class norms and to challenge assumptions of worth centered around clothing, diction, education, or other status. Our value is not conditional. And then principle number five, most directly affected people are experts at their own lives. Those most directly affected by racial injustice and oppression should be in leadership at the center of our movement and telling their stories directly. We stand in the movement for black lives at a time in which voting rights are being threatened at every turn. Black people are being denied the most basic of rights, the right to vote and have adequate representation in our country. We work towards a society in which black life is valued, in which black life is not discarded, in which black lives matter, and in which the work of black people is seen as equal to their white counterparts. Black voices in our congregations, in our faith, and in the world must be valued. Our music today, it will be provided by one of our own, Mike Fuller, and it's the Marvin Gaye song, What's Going On? Yeah. 
Our message today will be given by one of our own, Minnie Venable. She's been a member here since 1988 and has served as president twice in non-consecutive terms. She will be speaking on how the Black Lives Matter movement is supported by our UU principles. I was searching our national website, uua.org, actually looking to see what our national organization is doing to support the Black Lives Matter movement. As I believe racism is this country's most crucial problem today, in a time of many oppressive problems, such as suppression of voting rights, I have concluded with some shame that we as a white congregation are failing in the area of supporting people of color. In 2017, at our National Assembly of Congregations, Brian Stevenson was the WARE lecturer. This program is, for many you use, the highlight of General Assembly. Brian Stevenson is the founder and executive director of the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, Alabama. He's a widely acclaimed public interest lawyer who has dedicated his career to helping the poor, the incarcerated, and the condemned. Under his leadership, the Equal Justice Initiative won major legal challenges, eliminating excessive and unfair sentencing, exonerating innocent death row prisoners, confronting abuse of the incarcerated and the mentally ill, and aiding children prosecuted as adults. He has successfully argued Supreme, Court, Supreme cases, excuse me, in the U.S. Supreme Court and won a historic ruling there banning mandatory life without parole sentences for all children 17 or under as unconstitutional. He is also the author of Just Mercy, the critically acclaimed New York Times bestseller and the UU Common Read for 2015-2016. Here are some of the things he said in the Ware Lecture. The opposite of poverty isn't wealth, it is justice. I'm not interested in pub punishing, excuse me, America for the history of racial injustice. I want to liberate America because on the other side of confession, comes freedom. He said, there are four things that we must do to create a more just and equal world. Get close to the poor, excluded, neglected, and abused. Change the narratives that underlie racism and other inequalities. Stay hopeful about creating justice and be willing to do uncomfortable things. He spent much of his life in proximity to the poor, neglected, and abused. Visiting a death row prisoner to inform him that he would not be executed in the next year led Stevenson to find his passion studying law and identify his life's work. He said, justifying oppression with a narrative of fear and anger leads to a culture that tolerates injustice. He said that the great evil of American slavery wasn't involuntary servitude, it was the narrative of racial difference that was used to justify slavery. Even the Supreme Court adopted it. The period from the Civil War to World War II and even until 1965 when the Civil Rights Act was passed, all of this was an era of terrorism against black people. 
and black people fled the U.S. South to northern cities as refugees and exiles from the terror there. Something that is very rarely discussed, he said. Today, people of color are too often presumed dangerous and guilty, no matter their social class, age, or how much money they have. In South Africa, the history of apartheid is openly discussed. And in Germany, Holocaust stones are placed in front of homes Jews were taken from and sent to camps because Germany is trying to change the narrative. But in the United States, we avoid discussion of slavery and lynching, said Stevenson who has a project to put markers at every lynching site in the country. He urged you use to make a choice to do uncomfortable things, say uncomfortable things, be in uncomfortable places, and stay hopeful about creating racial justice. Hope, he said, makes us speak out. So fight against what makes you hopeless Hopefulness is the one thing we cannot compromise. You are either hopeful or you are part of the problem. Although the Black Lives Matter Coalition itself was founded in 2013, the slogan stormed into the national consciousness late last year as high profile cases of police brutality were cleared by grand juries from Missouri to New York. This past summer, the 2021 General, UUA General Assembly called on UUs to support the Black Lives Matter movement. Over the past year, more congregations started displaying banners proclaiming Black Lives Matter and then putting them back up after vandals and thieves have defaced or stolen them. Our church has had one displayed for years, even though it's in a less than prominent place. This is a time of renewed attention and energy toward racial justice work, but clearly there is also caution and fear among us. Here are more ways you use can engage with Black Lives Matter. These come from an article in the UU World written by Kenny Wiley who was a senior editor there from 2015 to 2018. His work has also been published in many other national newspapers and magazines. This article is titled, Five Ways to Support Black Lives Matter, with my usual editorial comments inserted. First, learn. It's been several years since our congregation participated in the Witnessing Whiteness workshop, in which those of us who joined learned much, and we presented a, an entire month of sermons on Sunday mornings about what we learned. Says Mr. Wiley, we have good intentions, but often lack information about the realities of racial inequality and injustice as it exists in our own community. I live in Potter County. I tried to find out the population of prisoners by race in the Potter County Detention Center, but I was passed to two other different people after the first contact and then an answering machine, and my phone call was never returned. We are advised by Mr. Wiley to get up to speed by following publications that cover Black Lives Matter and other racial justice movements, such as Color Lines, colorlines.com, The Root, theroot.com, and Black Voices from the Huffington Post. And we could start a discussion group about Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness, or Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy, mentioned earlier. The UUA has study guides for both books. White UUs need to talk 
with each other about whiteness, white supremacy, and white fragility. White fragility was originally defined as the fear of talking about racism. I think that's based on the fear on the part of some whites that we might find some white supremacy feelings in ourselves. We might still want somewhere inside us to feel we are better than at least someone else. We may need to come face to face with the fact that whites are truly and only equal with blacks. As infants, we all had the feeling of being the center of the universe. As older children, we felt superior when we won and became king of the mountain. Somewhere in our reptilian brain, we may hold on to that. But those feelings in adults are immature, even pathological. Some of us may need to grow up and face the fact that each of us, no matter our color, is no better and no worse than our actions. Only our actions, our behavior, can make us different. Of course, some people are smarter, some people more beautiful by different cultural needs and standards, but that's different from race. White supremacists need to understand that democracy and rule by minority, whites, don't go together. You probably already know that projections about the color of our population in the near future is that whites will be in the minority. And now I'm quoting Mr. Wiley again. Another thing we white folks can do is to connect to and embrace the Black Lives Matter movement as it exists today. Today's movement doesn't look like the civil rights struggle of the 50s and 60s. Much of the conversation and organizing happens online, especially on Twitter. Uncomfortable as I am with that, as a not tech savvy old person, that's the advice, get on Twitter. You can find the Twitter sites Wiley suggests by looking for this article on UUA.org, Five Ways to Support Black Lives Matter. Another thing we can do is to support this movement. Just one example, on short notice in late July, the Reverend Mike Moran and John Vivian of the First Unitarian Society of Denver helped the local Black Lives Matter chapter host more than 50 travelers on their way from Southern California to the Movement for Black Lives Matter National Convention in Cleveland. Another thing, engage. Make it known you're part of the movement. Post about it on Facebook, buy a yard sign or bumper sticker, even though it might get stolen. White anti-racism activist Chris Crass said, the question for us as Unitarian Universalists is not how many people of color can we get in our pews? It is how much damage can we do to white supremacy? Finally, we can stay woke. The term stay woke is used on social media by people who continue pointing to the ever-growing list of victims of state violence, racial profiling, or other racial injustices. We need to continue to grapple with the magnitude of the work ahead and not give in to the temptation to ignore the racial realities of our country. It is imperative that none of us looks away. Since there is no Black Lives Matter chapter here, we could at least, all of us, individually, join the local NAACP 
and thereby support local black people. If we are to truly live up to our first principle and honor the inherent worth and dignity of every person, then we must proclaim in words and deeds that black lives matter. At this time in our service, we recognize the joys and concerns of our community. Rick Todd's mother passed away on Friday, September 10th, surrounded by her family. So please keep Rick and his family in your thoughts. And now I'll light one candle for the unspoken or unknown joys and concerns of our congregation. Usually at this time in our service, the congregation makes its financial offering. If you have made a pledge or would like to make a contribution, you can simply mail it into our office or you can make it online. There is a big donate button on our YouTube landing page and on our website, uumarillo.org. On the home page in the upper right corner, you'll find a blue donate button that will take you to a place where you can securely donate using PayPal. If you have made a financial pledge for this year, please keep up your pledge. For our announcements, while we are not meeting in person for our 11 o'clock service, some groups are still meeting. We have the Nothing Much Buddhist group. We'll continue to meet on Monday at 7.30 p.m. using Zoom. Please check their Facebook page for more information. And the Knowledge Seekers class meets on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And it's a group that meets to view and discuss DVD presentations on various topics. All are welcome, or as long as you are vaccinated, wear your mask and maintain social distancing here in Chandler Hall. Now we come to ex uh, extinguishing our chalice and this is the message of our faith by Mar Maureen Killeran. This is the message of our faith to act with passion in the face of injustice, to love with courage in the midst of life's pain. This is the meaning of our chalice flame. May it empower our hearts until we are together again. Now, if you'll join me in our closing words, may the fellowship of this hour touch and move our lives until we come again together and go in peace. <laughs>